Oh, look at that one. There we go. Look at that juicy bait. Yep, I'm gonna let him just eat for a second. I'm watching it though. Oh, it's big. Dude, it's a big fish. Real big. Oh my gosh, let me get a net. What's up guys, I'm super excited about today. Today is a little bit different than the norm today. I'm with my buddy Eric Baldwin. He is a local here in Wallen, Tennessee. And guys, today we're gonna be working the Little River and we're going after a bait. We're catching it in a unique way. And then ultimately we're gonna go further down the river and we're going after the big boys. We're going after the small mouth. But guys, strap in. This is gonna be really entertaining. It's gonna be a lot of fun. We're gonna learn a lot. So without further ado, wish us luck. Here we go. Eric has a very unique way of catching grampus as well as crawdads, and today he's going to share that technique with us. Water's coming right here pretty quick. I'm yeah, gonna, it looks good right there. I'm going to go ahead and jerk this rock up real quick. All right. Go ahead and scoot it out of the way. Yep. Pop that one up. At first glance, you'll notice Eric flipping over rocks with the net slightly downriver, but as you'll soon discover, there's way more that happens below the surface than meets the eye. Now pull it up so we got. Yep. Got a few grampus is hanging on the, really? the outside. Oh, there's a grampus, guys. Look at there. You guys are familiar with grampus. They're the, the smallmouth candy right there. He's already got one. Have you ever been bit by one? Oh, yes, many times. <laughs> many times. <laughs> okay. They will draw blood. Absolutely. So, guys, the cool thing that um, it, we're doing right now is after the rocks have been flipped, we've actually put them back over the way they were. So, we just came through, we found a couple. We want to make sure that uh, all of the algae, all of the grass, all that stuff is actually facing upward. So once we're done flipping these rocks, we're actually putting them back the way they were, um, just so the ecosystem kind of stays as is after we get our grampus and our crawdads. A lot of times with seen nets, guys, it's a three, four person operation, or at least at a minimum two. He's got a whole new technique just for one that's awesome. This is insane, man. I am like blown away right now. There we go. Look at that juicy bait. Nice darter, another beautiful darter. Oh my gosh. I, I can't get over the colors of a darter, man. Oh my gosh. It doesn't hurt that for this technique, Eric actually for fun likes to play arena league football. Tell him who you play for. Knoxville Bandits. <laughs> the, <Like tight end. laughs> the Knoxville Bandits. He's a tight end, so flipping these rocks, no problem. Moving pretty quick, so we're gonna. To... Notice as he flips over the rocks that he also does a quick swipe on the underside to make sure nothing is still clinging on to the bottom side of the rocks. Uh, we got some more crawdads in here. Oh, more darters. Heck yeah, man! I cannot believe. So where are the darters hanging? Are they sitting? They're sitting under these rocks. Okay. Hiding from this current, they're just sitting under these rocks. Yeah. But they're we under almost every rock. We got a keeper crawled out there. Yes, sir. Now the grampus oh. in here. Oh yeah, I see the grampus. Yeah. You always got to look down oh, here deep. Oh, look at that one. Because they'll hide down here uh, under these leaves. A little mud puppy right here. Oh yeah, look at that little guy. But My goodness. You always got to look down in here because they'll get under these um, leaves down here and you won't see them. So you have to kind of you know move it around, find what's all in there. Heck yeah. Nice crawl, Ed. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Ooh, monster. Oh, whoa. Guys, that may be one of the biggest grampus I've personally ever held there. Look at those pinchers right there. Whoa. Definitely, definitely solid bait. Check it out, guys, side by side. I thought that one was big until I held this one. Let's go ahead and put them in the bucket. You guys, check out all the bait we've already got. Toss that in, toss that in. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Yeah. It's awesome. Now let's take a closer look below the surface and see exactly what's going on here. Notice the strong current sweeping all of the bait into the net as soon as the rock is flipped over. It almost has like this vacuum effect, which is super, super interesting. I saw this net and uh, tops flat. This net right here, it bends to the bottom. The most important part of this net and why it's so important is that the front of the net is pliable 
and will conform to any size rock that's on the bottom of the river. No bait is able to slip beneath the net. Guys, we got a darter, we got a crawdad, we got some grampus, a little bit of everything. And guys, the cool thing about this is these are the natural baits that these fish are eating anyway, so we're literally targeting exactly what these fish are gonna eat so that later on we can catch some big ones. Let's just, just explain to the people what, what we're looking at here. Oh, I see this little dam right here. It's a little natural dam. Yeah. The water turns right here, honestly kind of backing up. So if you move any of these rocks right here, it's gonna come gushing through and it's gonna put the bait right here into this net. Okay. One thing I learned from Eric is that the water current is everything. If the water is not moving fast enough, the bait won't get sucked into the net. So you need to find areas where there's a fast moving current. Oh, I just saw a crawdad. Oh, wow. Yeah, there's a big grampus. Big piece of glass too. Big old piece of glass. A bunch of grampus in there. Oh, wow. Guys, look at this. We've got big old grampus hanging out here. Here's another one. Look at that. After catching plenty of bait, it was time to head down river in search of deeper pools where big smallmouth and other fish hang out. I couldn't get over how unique that whole technique was for catching bait, and I was even more excited about getting down to some deep pools that held big bass as well as drum and catfish. As you will soon find out, grampus and crawdad are what's on the menu for smallmouth bass. So guys, we are off the beaten path, working our way down to the river. And let me tell you something, the water looks incredible down here. This is my trail. This is Eric's trail. <laughs> you, you can tell not a lot of people have used it. It's probably just him. But this is this is his happy place right here, I have a feeling. All right, you guys, so we're gonna cross over uh, the river right here and we're gonna get onto the other side. And then we're gonna fish down here. We got some big pools and uh, should be awesome. So let's go ahead and cross. Trees down. Oh, dude. It, it looks like a smallmouth heaven through here. I'll tell you one thing, if, as hot as it is today, that feels good. All right, guys, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna learn how to rig up a crawdad, something I know nothing about. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what Eric does here. All right, I usually go right through here on the bottom of its tail. Okay. Still lives, doesn't hurt it. Okay. It can, it can still crawl around. It's still gonna be flopping and it's just gonna look more real on okay. the bottom. Man, that was like a 40 yard cast right there, guys. So he's way out. I'm just gonna let this one sit for a second while I'm gonna be getting my other one rigged up. Okay. So he's actually, so guys, he's actually using the tree limbs. It's kind of like a rod holder. And uh, now he's gonna get the other one rigged up. If it takes off, he'll grab it and we'll see what he has. And while we're waiting on um, something to eat that crawdad, we're gonna, we're gonna find out how to rig up a grampus. So check it out. Here's our grampus. Go ahead and take it away. All right. I'm gonna try to hook it right here below its guts. It it has guts all the way down about right here. You don't wanna kill it, so you wanna hook it directly below the guts. And that's also why I'm using this real small hook, real thin hook, doesn't hurt bait. Bait lives longer. I'm hooking about right here, two thirds of the way down on it. It still lives, still plenty of life. Nice cast. So guys, another equally long cast. They're both gonna be sitting on the bottom. And then as things swim up, they're gonna see them, hopefully eat them. Real quick, so um, once Eric gets back over here, we're gonna talk about what kind of fish are in the little river that we're gonna be targeting today. What kind of things can we expect? Um, there's everything in here. Drum, channel catfish, red eye, a few trout, but mainly we're after largemouth and big smallmouth that are okay. all in here. All right, so we got Grampus hiding on Grampus. <laughs> There we go, that's a big one. Heck yeah, I love the tin. So the thing that's cool about this tin is, um, well, Eric, go ahead and tell them the story about the tin. Well, I actually started out using a bottle about like this. <laughs> right. And one day I was out here you know, catching bait and my dang bottle drifted away, floated away. So I had to figure <laughs> out some kind of idea, yeah. something else I could use. So then yeah. I actually went to a big army canteen, which that worked pretty good, but when it got really hot, the stuff inside would actually cook. <laughs> so, okay. All right. I had to come up with something else, and I happened to find this little jewel. 
Oh yeah. Today, five dollars at a little small flea market. A flea market. And that's the best thing I've ever found. <laughs> that's awesome. Eric's got me inspired here. It's about as far as I can get it, but. Oh, fish on. Yep, we got a nice one. Oh, it's big. Dude, it's a big fish. Oh. Oh, oh you're good, you're good. Yep, that's a big bass. Oh, wow, guys. Big, big smallie on the Grampus. Oh, oh, oh. Dude, huge, huge fish. Oh, we lost it at the bank. Ooh. Ooh. All right, you guys. So I literally just hooked into a monster smallie that got off at the bank. Eric tried to net it for me, but I just couldn't get it close enough before he pops loose. But guys, it was a monster. Guys, the crazy thing about today is these, my GoPro is actually overheating. So it's turning off like every few minutes. It's so up. it's adding an extra wrinkle of craziness to the day. Um, however, I'm doing my best to, when I'm not fishing or not doing anything, turning it off, taking the battery out and letting it kind of cool. All right, guys, we got another one on. I'm gonna go ahead and just start reeling in. It's gone. Put it back down. Yep, I don't feel anything. I'm gonna keep my finger on the line though and just feel. Here we go, guys. Yep. There's something eating. Yep, I'm gonna let him just eat for a second. I'm watching it though. All right, here we go, guys. Fish on. <laughs> it is a bass. All right. So not the not the uh, the bass we were expecting, but nonetheless, it is a smallmouth. First smallmouth. Hey, hey, fish on, fish on. All right, here we go, guys. Ah, uh, little. <laughs> okay. Big though. Hey, you know what? Upgrade though. We've got an upgrade. So guys, we went from tiny smallmouth. Now we're getting close to that one pound range. Pull it out from wherever. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. Turtle. Um. Turtle. Yeah, I just caught my first turtle. Back to the shell. What in the world? How did that happen? I have no idea. Guys, I just caught a turtle. Oh my goodness. That's why your free rod kept moving. Yeah, we were watching my rod moving. Guys, I just um, brought in this turtle who was hanging out next to the Grampus. I believe it's a hognose turtle. And um, yeah, the hook came right out. It was on the back of his shell. And um, I don't believe I've actually harmed this little guy. He just came in with me. We were actually just, we were watching my line and the line just kept slightly moving. We were like, what is going on here? Didn't look like a fish at all. So I reel in and I felt a little bit of weight and look what I've got here, guys. Little bitty hog nose. Pretty cool. Very random. All right, guys, so here's the deal. We're, we've spent a little bit of time out here, midday sun. Been working it hard. Um, guys, I had a big one on, it got off right at the bank. We've had a couple of little guys as well. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna go to a gas station and get some beverages, because we are very hot. I brought multiple water bottles, multiple Gatorades, it doesn't matter. You can't drink it fast enough. So we're gonna go to the gas station, we're gonna regroup. We're gonna come back out here, catch some fresh bait, finish the day right. Just got back to the location, just got a slushy. I'm feeling rejuvenated. So we're gonna get back out there, catch some fresh bait, go catch a big one. All right, guys, it's time. I've watched the master and now the apprentice. It's gotta do some work. So I'm gonna go over to this uh, moving water, see if I can catch some bait. Here we go. Really? Surely I got something in there. Oh, there's a Grampus, I got a Grampus. All right, guys, for all my efforts, I got at least one Grampus, maybe more, we'll see. All right, guys, so we both hit the same location here. I just got three Grampus in a row, best haul for me. And then guys, look at Eric's, we got one, we got two, golly. Crawdad, Grampus, we just hit the honey hole. And uh, wow. This, 
I this, mean, that's how fast it happens though. Yeah, I mean, this, this spot, unbelievable. So I feel like I'm finally kind of getting the hang of it. So guys, um, Eric actually went over to Walmart today and he grabbed two of these. They're 15 bucks a pop. He's actually giving me one as a gift, which is super nice of him. Um, so I'm super excited to try this on the Nola Chucky. Guys, we're gonna go back to that deep hole where we first started where I lost that monster and where we got bites earlier. And uh, we're gonna see what we can do with this fresh bait. We've also got a storm on the way. So we're gonna see if we can catch something before the storm hits. Here we go. Heck yeah. All right, guys, we're here. Um, I'm gonna grab a Grampus. Uh, sounds like Eric's gonna go for maybe like a monster crawdad and we're just gonna see what happens. There we go. That's a better cast. Heck yeah. All right, guys, now we put them on the trees and we sit and we wait. And I don't think it's gonna take very long with this pre, this storm coming up. A little pre-storm weather. Did you get a little tap? Yeah, I want a little tap. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yours is getting, yours is getting messed with. Yeah, I know, but I got a big crawdad on there. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, yeah, go ahead and open it up and then just kind of fill up your hand. Oh, oh. yep, 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 yep. Okay, I'm gonna let him eat for a second. Oh, pulled it out of his mouth. You can see that water. Yeah, something bubbled up. Yep. Oh, oh, he took it. Took the Grampus. Bumped my tree. Oh, and it triggered a bite. No way. Did it? Yeah, I bumped it and it, it made the bass want him. Fish on. Oh, I'll, I'll one back. I don't know if he jumped over your line. Yeah, he did. Okay. Oh, he's fighting good though. Man, these little river smallies are awesome. Guys, check it out. <laughs> the Grampus is literally inside his mouth, ticked off. He's biting. Dude, this is just, this bait and this river is awesome. Guys, check out this little river smolly. Let's go ahead and give him a nice release. Heck yeah. Nope, nope, you're getting it. On the crawdad. Is he running? Oh, guys, he's running. Fish on? Oh, big fish. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna reel in. Get out of your way. Real big. Oh my gosh, let me get a net. Oh, how's he feeling? Yeah, he's big, big, big. Yeah, I saw that wake. Uh, I think it's a catfish or a drum, though. It's too big. Dude, if it's a bass, though. It's, it's a drum. Drum? Drum? Big drum, though. Oh. Do you think this even matters? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Big drum. Let's land him. Spot real slow. It's like you killed bass. Yeah. It's a slow, slow reel. Yeah. Get this guy landed. All right. Can't see him. There he is. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. Get him. No, he turned. He turned. 40. Right there. I see him. Oh, this is tense. Uh, got him. Yes. Let's go. Let's go. Yes. <laughs> awesome, man. Here's your drum. Oh, thank you. Heck yeah. All right, guys, check out this beautiful drum. About as big as my arm. Absolutely. Eight on the crawdad, which is pretty cool. Five pounds? Yeah, oh, yeah, probably. Oh, he's kicking. He's kicking. He's kicking. There he goes, guys. Heck yeah. All right, let's catch another one. Grab that one and say the one. No way. Dude, you're already getting hit. Guys, we've already got a bite on the Grampus. You fell him? Oh, yeah. Fish on. There we go. River small. Yeah, let's go. Heck yeah. See if he comes up for another jump. I can see him. He's, he's digging right now. Yes, sir. <laughs> Look at that, guys. Fast action, though. Oh, oh yeah. Grandpa. Fast action, though. That was cool. That took maybe one minute. <laughs> 30 seconds. Maybe 30 seconds, yeah. All right, guys, so we got a storm coming. We hear the thunder. We see some lightning now. So anytime that happens, good rule of thumb is go ahead and bounce. You can actually hear it right now. So we're going to go ahead and reel in. Head back to the cars, call it a day. Man, it was fun. Eric, I want to thank you for taking me out of your spot, um, teaching me a new skill, which hopefully you guys can also replicate at home. And uh, guys, we're going to go ahead and get these lines in and uh, live to fish another day. So, all right, guys, so if you enjoyed this one, you may also enjoy my video where I go up into the Nola Chucky and I catch some Grampus of my own flipping rocks. I know a better way now. Or if you guys would prefer to go onto Boone Lake and see a big striper caught, I've got one right here for you. 
Till next time, tight lines. Three, two, one.